Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This is the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire. They are lined up early outside the PMAC, getting ready for the number 10 ranked team in the country, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, coming in to take on an LSU team which has won its last two. Lights are off here in the PMAC, except for one. We're the guys ruining the scene if they turn this place around with the in the front row. Tom Hart, Dane Bradshaw, happy to be here on site. To, at its simplest, this game, Dane, should be LSU's offense versus Texas Tech's defense. LSU has plenty of star power. They've got three guys in the top 15 in the SEC in scoring, and Smart, Watford, and Thomas. But Texas Tech, it, they're not going to be punked on the defensive end, but they're going to have to take a lot of pride in their one-on-one -on -one defense, keep the ball out of the paint. That's their DNA. Their identity this season on the offensive end comes courtesy of a transfer. Mac McClung from Georgetown. He's hiding in the shadows, but he's used to the spotlight. He's leading the league in scoring in conference games. And it all started with a snowboard accident back in eighth grade that allowed him to rebuild his shot. If I could go back to eighth grade, I would have broke my arm too if these were the results. <laughs> but this kid is a three-level scorer. He's not just a great athlete. He can score at the rim, mid-range, and from three. But most importantly, he is playing the smartest basketball of his career under Coach Beard. Uh, he's been great in late clock situations. Couldn't quite hit the game winner against West Virginia. On the other side, LSU is used to having fantastic freshmen take the court here. I don't know if they've seen somebody like Cameron Thomas, though. He leads the country in scoring as a freshman. He is a bucket getter. He is thinking score every time the ball is in his hands. You must be prepared defensively because he's looking to get it up. He's a bad shot taker at times, but he's a bad shot maker too. Will Wade had his team rolling before a couple of recent losses, and they're coming off of a good one against Texas A&M. As McClung gets ready to take the floor for this Texas Tech team. Mentioned their defense. They allow just 62 points a game, top 20 in the country. There's a look at Will Wade, one of the most efficient offenses in the country, taking the floor here at the PMAC in its 50th season, where all time LSU has won 75% of its games. Eighth season as a head coach, came here from VCU, where he took VCU to a couple of NCAA tournaments after leaving Shaka Smart's staff in 2013 for Chattanooga, where he was one of the youngest coaches in the country. And then there's Chris Beard. Last time he was here was when he was on Tom Pender's staff with Texas. They came in with that talented backcourt to take on Shaq and company back in the late 80s, early 90s, two-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Spent a decade as an assistant at Tech out of both Bob and Pat Knight. Year at Little Rock where he won 30 games, and he's got a national championship game appearance under his belt as a head man in Lubbock. In Norman, Oklahoma's putting the finishing touches on Alabama. A five-point lead late in that one. Big 12 looking to get off to a good start. Here's McClung with his first touch. Last three games, he's been magnificent. 25 points a game on 48% shooting from deep. This went final. Oklahoma over Bama, 66-61 over on ESPN. Edwards. Gets caught up, shot clock at two. Late game, late clock situation, and the floor is an air ball. Wait, how about Texas Tech was the defensive team in this matchup? Well, LSU understands that's where they must improve. Not only their first shot defense, but also getting the rebound. A perfect first possession on that end of the court for the LSU Tigers. LSU starting five for their top scorers combined for 71 of their 78 points against AM. Here's Trenton Watford with the drive. And it'll go out of bounds and belong to Tech. Texas Tech coming off a big Monday loss to West Virginia, in which the Mountaineers didn't miss in the last nine and a half minutes. The Red Raiders blew a 12-point lead with seven and a half to go. They had a chance for a late game situation, but McClung couldn't miss his baseline, uh, couldn't make his baseline jumper. Here he is from deep on the wing. Follows his own miss. Loose ball corralled by the Red Raiders. And he'll get another shot at it. Edwards, no. Where does LSU want to go in the half court? 
They like to get the one-on-one -on -one matchups. They don't have a lot of assists statistically. They just want the mismatch and go to work. And here's Cam Thomas. Shot was blocked. We got a foul on his way up. Well, he's such a difficult cover, and he's so good. When, when you are as good as he is from the free throw line, shooting right at 90%, you go into that lane with such confidence, and he's earned the reputation as a scorer and a guy that does not shy, shy away from the contact. Kevin McCuller commits the foul. That's his first. Cameron Thomas, freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, out of Oak Hill, where he was the all-time leading scorer in Oak Hill history. Considering they had guys like Rod Strickland, Jerry Stackhouse, Josh Smith, Carmelo, Ron Mercer. Nobody put up more than Cameron Thomas did. The nation's leading freshman scorer as LSU on the board about two minutes in. Well, if you're an LSU fan wondering who's going to get the assignment on McClung, it's going to be everybody. LSU is going to continue to switch one through five. Watford falling off. Here's McClung. Shot clock at five. Tech late again with two, and they get the bunny. Well, you can tell Texas Tech is willing to be very patient on the offensive end, make LSU work defensively. Watford with the drive. That was a play that Will Wade just put in last night. Drew up for his guys today, and McClung taking it the other way. Will Wade mentioned to us, Mac McClung is at his best in transition. And when he gets that space, they're going to be opportunistic, and Mac McClung so good at finishing around the rim. It could be the difference in this game. Texas Tech's defense is elite in transition, allowing just .87 points per possession. Javante Smart with a driving kick. Shot clock at five. Back to Smart. Blocked. Rejected by Marcus Santos Silva, the transfer from VCU. He had a great game against Will Wade's team last year when LSU went to Richmond. He had a double-double. It was a VCU two-point win against their former head coach. McClung into the corner. Good ball reversal, but... Off the mark, and Darius Davies has the board. As you'll see LSU, as they bring it down, they take a lot of what I call my turn shots. They don't really create for others, and there's a rare opportunity for an assist, but that's why the one-on-one -on -one defense for Texas Tech is just so paramount in this game because of their one-on-one -on -one ability. Red Raiders gave up 88 on Monday night against West Virginia. They were put together one of the oddest team stat lines that you'll see. The only team in the last 10 years to score 85, only turn it over twice, and lose. Baseline jumper from McCullough. I haven't seen Texas talk, tech, take a shot with more than 10 seconds on the shot clock. They're making LSU defense work and stay disciplined for the entire shot clock. Mismatch here with Watford. They bring a help. Shot clock at three. Smart. Maybe took a step. That's tough. That's a nice read out of the double team by Watford. Normally you can double team a big guy and expect him to turn it over, but he is a good passer out of the post. The LSU just one for five from the floor to start this game. Klung has missed both of his threes. Trying to work it inside. Deflected by the Tigers. Here's Javante Smart. Thomas with the ball fake. Slide step three. Good. And that's not the matchup you want if you coach here. Your center, Santos Silva, on the top freshman scorer in the country. McClung on days. Got a bump on his way in. Foul will be on the floor. That'll send us to a break dead even, six apiece. Well, we talked about McClung is so dangerous in transition. You better get back. When he has the ball in his hands, he will beat the defense down the court, finishes at the rim. But on the other end, LSU's got star power, and it comes by the name of Cam Thomas.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. And apart by Heineken 00, Zero, now you can. And Burger King, $1 your way, only at Burger King. After slow start, LSU has hit its last couple. Tied with Texas Tech 6'6". Chris Beard, two-time Big 12 Coach of the Year, has slowed this game down. We are dead even, by the way. One win apiece. Oklahoma knocked off Alabama. And Texas A&M opened its day with a seven-point win against Kansas State. A really good win for Oklahoma, who came into the game missing two starters right at game time, so shorthanded and pulled it off against one of the hottest teams in the SEC of the Crimson Tide. LSU has gone to its bench for Sharif O'Neal, the transfer from USA, UCLA, son of Shaq, defending now and a kick to the corner for McCuller off the top corner and a board for O'Neal. As it relates to the bench, I think Texas Tech has the edge. They get better as they get to their bench with T.J. Shannon. One in red is an absolute star. One of ten finalists deserving award. Nice strip by Shannon. Sophomore from Chicago who was a fantastic high school football player. Basketball offers came late. Good feed inside, and Santos Silva's got his first bucket. He had 17 and 11 with four blocks and two steals against LSU last year. That's just a perfect secondary break. Getting in the paint, jump stop, making a simple bounce pass. Fundamentals. Challenge jumper done by the Cameron Thomas. Earlier this season, I asked him his favorite place to score on the floor. His answer, everywhere. <laughs> Well, when he goes left, he loves that step back. That's twice now. He's done that for five points. So about Javante Smart. Came in from the baseline. Smart won't slow down all the way to the rim. She's in front by the deuce. Yeah. After a slow start, Tigers have made their last four. in the passing lane. Whoa, he got stripped and Santos Silva jumped right over the top of him. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey. Oh, Santos Silva avoided a foul on this play. Let's see if they got him. Oh, just a nice reach there. Yeah, if you jump over him, I guess they're not going to call a touch foul with the with the shoe on the shoulder. You know, track me uh, right next door this weekend. Santo Silva could slide over there due to high hurdles. TJ Shannon picks up his first. Shannon has been inconsistent in some of the bigger games this year for Tech. He had just two against Baylor, only five against Houston. In an inefficient game against the Longhorns, that last second win for Texas Tech a couple weeks ago. Thomas, boy, he thought about it. Turn fade away. And the board inside on O'Neal. It's going to be charged to freshman Micah Peep. And obviously, the dunk won't count there, but you love the aggression, the attitude of O'Neal coming in the game. He's got to try to finish above the rim bore. And last game, he had a few shots blocked at the rim. Don't be a below the rim guy when you've got that type of length and athleticism. Missed a handful of games with the right foot injury early in the season. And he'll stay with LSU here, 19 on the shot clock. Will Wade put in some very specific baseline out of bounds plays for this Texas Tech team because they overplay so much on their man to man defense. Be interesting to see if he breaks those out late in the game. Well, Texas Tech will turn you over 26% of the time. That's six best in the country. He takes a lot of shots. Most in the country by percentage. He takes 36% of the shots while he's on the floor. And he's starting to see what makes Cameron Thomas a volume scorer. Open three for Shannon. Those shoes. Identity is not on the defensive end, but you can count this as a really good defensive start for the Tigers. 
Well, as Will Wade has said, I mean, their first shot defense is not bad. It's collecting the defense, rebound, finishing possessions, which they've done a much better job of. And, well, Texas Tech's usually good on turnovers. That's their fifth now. If you're Texas Tech, Javante Smart with a little oop de oop in the leg. Uh, full day of college hoops continues tonight with more SEC Big 12 Challenge on ESPN and the App Top 20 Showdown on Rocky Top as number 15 Kansas looks to build momentum going to Tennessee. Then out west for WCC action will be Dave Fleming and Sean Farnham on the call. Number one Gonzaga taking on Pepperdine at 8 Eastern. If you want to see flawless basketball, watch the Gonzaga team. See if they can't stay undefeated. I think they've got a heck of a shot at running the table, including through the NCAA tournament. And so many times we say there's not a lot of great teams in college basketball, a lot of good teams. Not this year. Gonzaga Baylor. Two elite, not an elite performance early on for Texas Tech. They turned it over at a high rate. They haven't made a three yet. All part of a 13 to two LSU run. The first few possessions of this game, they took it late in the shot clock, got good looks. They've got to get back to that. LSU doing a good job on the glass. No second chance opportunity for Tech. Double drive! Double drive! Got about 2,000 fans inside the building. You can still hear Will Wade screaming out his play calls from the LSU bench. Shot clock in single digits. Smart, going to keep it. And then he's able to draw the foul. If that's McClung, it's his second. You just got to finish possession without fouling. I thought McClung did a great job. Smart loves that crossover step back three. Well, he's the number one three-point shooter percentage-wise in the SEC. So you force him as a driver, see if you can't lead him into the charge. But you have to resist swiping at that, getting the hand check. You did everything else right. Foul is on Marcus Santos Silva. And at the free throw line, that loses Javante Smart. Josh LeBlanc, number 11, has entered the game for LSU. He's a Georgetown transfer, just like McClung. They were together for a year and a half. Javante Smart. Creeping closer towards the 1,000 point plateau in his career. He'll get a breather. Came in needing 33 to get to that mark. LSU by a touchdown early. McClung one for three to start this game. He's missed both of his threes. Came in averaging 25 points a game over his last three, including a 30-point performance against West Virginia, where 24 of those points came after the half. And he'll take a break here. He's a gamer, man. He usually saves his best for the best. He's brought that dynamic scoring from Georgetown to Lubbock. McCuller, mid-range, got it. Been a while since Texas Tech got a good look on the offensive end. The switching and the length has really bothered them that LSU is doing a ton of deflections for the Tigers. Watford puts it on the floor, and we got an offensive foul on the LSU sophomore. I believe that's TJ Shannon getting in there. Knowing that LSU likes to run offense out of the elbow with Watford, they throw double teams at him that time. He tries to beat the double before they come. Shannon moves his feet perfectly. Ooh. Another Texas Tech turnover. That's their seventh. We talked with Chris Beard yesterday. 
talked about this team's identity, and yes, it starts with defense, but taking care of the basketball is a big part of it. Yeah, they're one of the best in the country at the ball over, and rightfully so. It's something they emphasize and work on. They have film sessions where they study their turnover tendencies. For example, he might show a guy, hey, 60% of your turnovers come off when you're jumping off of one foot, so learn to play off two, but not executing so far today. Five turnovers, the last 441 for Chris Beard's squad. His former coach, Tom Penders, headed to the Hall of Fame. So you just heard from him yesterday. He's still staying in touch, a former Texas coach and UConn product where he was a two-sport star. And they brought that Texas team that was loaded in to take on Shaq and company in here in 1990. And there's talk between these two coaches that there might be a continuation of this series unrelated to the challenge. Perhaps a neutral site. They played a couple of those back when Shaq was on the roster. Maybe as early as next season. Stripped away by Shaq's son, Sharif. All alone underneath is Darius Davis. Good job by Gaines, keeping his head up, using his pivot foot. Nobody picked up days. Here's Shannon. Over the top of days. And Eric Gaines with the rebound for LSU. Chance for the Tigers to run. Thomas fading away. He's not shy. O'Neal. Another opportunity for the Tigers. And Picks a foul on days. Get a little sloppy. Everybody can use a breather. Even a little sloppy from up here. It's LSU by seven. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Interesting uniforms. A color versus color matchup there in Morgantown. What a finish for West Virginia on that Monday night win against Texas Tech made their last 10. The oh. back on the floor. Ball fake on Watford. And a foul on Trina Watford. That's his second. Mac McClung was recruited from Georgetown in the offseason. It's time where you couldn't take any campus visits. So what was the secret? Allen from the hangover was the secret. You see, Chris Beard were the three best friends that anyone could have. Chris Beard had him on a FaceTime call and was just driving around Lubbock from his house to the facility. That cardboard cut out of Allen was in the background. And McClung was hey, wait, what is that? He goes, it's Allen. And if you come here, I'll let you borrow him. And now. That cardboard cutout resides in Mac's apartment. It, it was in his room, but every time he would wake up, he would see a figure in the corner get freaked out. He said, I, I've had to put it in the closet <laughs> so it doesn't bother me so much. Yeah. Uh, and I loved Coach Beard's response. I said, well, it, was this the closer for Mac? He said, look, I would have stopped recruiting Mac if he didn't like the movie. Well, it's about a cultural fit here at Texas Tech. It goes back to uh, Chris Beard's division two days when he was the head coach at Angelo State. They went to Canyon to take on West Texas A&M, and one of the West Texas students had it in the stands. Beard said, you know, as a division two coach, you carry a lot of cash with you because you got to pay for all the meals. So I sent a manager up there and said, we'll buy that from you for $100 cash. At the end of the day, Beard only had 80. The kid took the deal, and he said the beauty of it is the fans were really nice to me. The kid kept waving at me during the game, even though we were the visitors. Well, knowing the money Chris Beard's making now, I hope that kid's charging some premium interest on that 20 bucks. Uh, you can collect, brother. Yeah, yeah he's added some commas since he uh, got to Lubbock and took him to the national championship. That's McClung's first three, and Texas Tech is within three. Tech switches on smart. O'Neill getting a lot of run here in the first half tonight. Does that surprise you? 
Yeah, I think they're ready for him, though. I mean, he's, he's closer to 100% than he has been. He gave him some good physical minutes in the last game against A&M, and they need bench production. Shot clock at two. Going to have to be a heave. And Ellis shoots on the offensive glass. It leads to another, and a Cam Thomas three. Best time to get an open three is off an offensive rebound. Good job by LeBlanc finding a shooter. McClellan with the drop down. Extra pass inside. Santos Silva with the bucket. Mm. Wow. Thomas will he fouled on the three. We got a couple guys that love to put the shots up. Yeah, there's no question. We got some ballers here and Mac McClung's just going to say, all right, if, if you're going to stay that far off me, I'll show you my pull-up three. And then Cam Thomas, that's the most open look he's going to have all night. So really poor execution so far on Texas Tech side because, one, you got to find the shooter even off the offensive rebound. And now that's twice that they've left their center, Santos Silva, on the best score for LSU. One time Thomas hit the three. The next time he got fouled on three. A dozen early for Cameron Thomas, a freshman out of Oak Hill Academy. Got off to a great scoring start in LSU uniform, had 32 against Texas A&M. It was the most by a freshman in an SEC opener since 2016 when Ben Simmons was wearing an LSU uniform. If you come into a program that already has some stars. I, I would think it's tough for a freshman to come in and take all these shots. But they respect his game. He puts the work in. He's a film junkie. Will Wade said, look, he, he has no hobbies. This guy just watches ball all day long. McClung was open for a split second. See, I'm going back to McClung. See if he can't take O'Neal off the bounce. They brought help from the left. McClung went right. Hangs but can't hit. He'll get a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, good recognition. Way to get it back to your score. Saw the mismatch, took advantage. It's a first down, Sharif O'Neal. We asked Mac yesterday about that snowboarding accident that allowed him to rebuild his shot. He said, I used to really load up on the right side. He said, I'd never been snowboarding before, but in eighth grade, somebody was like, hey, here's a sheet of plastic. Let's go snowboarding. I, I gave it a try. Didn't do it before, haven't done it since. But after the arm was broken, then he was able to start fresh and get rid of those bad habits. Yeah. That, that was good fortune that ultimately led to a, another broken opportunity as he broke Allen Iverson's scoring record. Boy, you talk about balling in high school. Two guys that can put up some numbers. Both wore Georgetown uniforms after high school in Virginia. Back from Southwest Virginia, Gate City. There he is. Davies with his first three. That's all Truman Roy for not forcing the issue, seeing the double team kicking it out. The big man is one of the league leaders in assists. You would not think that. Uh -oh, the went down. May have hit his head on the floor. Either that or he took a shot to the back of the head. He's got double figures. Days again. And McClung's still fighting for it and holding the side of his head. Near turnover, shovel pass for a bucket. Kevin McCullers got six. Texas Tech has gotten some good looks recently inside that paint. LSU has to make them play from the perimeter. Tech doesn't press a whole lot to pick up man, but three quarter court. Watford able to collect. Here's Javante Smart. Three ball. That's the first hit for Smart. He's got 10. It's LSU by seven. Well, there he is again, Watford. They call him sort of their point forward, point center. Another beautiful pass. McClung rattles it home deep two. No better medicine than the ball. Mac McClung feeling better once that ball gets in his hands. Double drag, double drag. Hey, 
Taken away by Watson. Wilkinson shares it. Smart with the finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. And in part by USAA Insurance, Auto Renters, and Home Insurance. Night, KC. Thanks, bud. Duke rolling over Clemson, a Clemson team that was a different team three weeks ago. Here's a corner three for Tech. It's off the mark. And we found it by Terrence Shannon Jr. You can hear maybe, uh, if you were with us about five minutes ago, TJ Shannon was waiting to come in the game, and Chris Beard walked up to the scorer's table and said, I want you to be aggressive. This is you. I want you to get after it. And here he is doing that now after entering the game for Texas Tech. Well, that's one step is bringing the fight on the paint and inside the paint, I should say. But the first part they got to do is get a shot. I mean, they've got nine turnovers. The difference in this game is the fast break points. You've got 13 points off turnovers to three for Texas Tech. And if they want to slow LSU down, they got to value the basketball the way Coach Beard teams typically do. Couple good for TJ Shannon out of Lincoln Park in Chicago at IMG. They keep living with this switch. I'd go back to smart. Yeah, you got the mismatch down low, but make the big man guard your point guard. Watford on Burton over the top of him. That's tough. Watford 6-9. Jamarius Burton 6-4. Watford had missed his first five field goal attempts. That's his first points of the night. There's Burton, transfer from Wichita State. Fantastic player in high school coming out of Charlotte before an ACL injury. A drive and a finish by McCullough. That's a really nice flash across the paint from the opposite side of the court by McCullough. with Duke at Miami and then these Red Raiders at home against a surging Oklahoma team like Kruger squad with a big win to start the day in the challenge over Alabama that one coming for Trenton Watford An LSU team that treats Watford as a point forward. He had nine assists in a game earlier this year against SIU Edwardsville. LSU gambled. Here's McClung into the front court. A floater good. That's, just so, that's remarkable. That's so good. To be able to go full speed like that, make the defense respect your drive, and then have the discipline to stop and the touch to hit the mid range. Thomas over McClung off the heel and then a foul on LSU on O'Neal. He lost his uh, footing. And that's the second on Sharif O'Neal. You get the sense that Texas Tech starting to play their style of basketball, taking care of the ball, getting the ball inside, being opportunistic and transition. And of course, finishing the possession on the defensive side. Instead of minutes for O'Neal. Or is that same number 32 his dad did? Or wears it for a couple of different reasons, including his idol, Kobe Bryant, who of course wore 8 and 24. Another free throw coming on this side as Texas Tech 
has made seven of their last nine. And Agbo's got him closing in on LSU. Knocks them both down. So not usually an offensive threat. Cam Thomas always is. Knuckleball, though. And it's rebounded by McCuller. Under a minute to go in the half. Red Raiders turn it over again. Turnover number 10 in the first half for Texas Tech. Hey, hook one trigger! Hook one trigger! Club second difference, shot clock and game clock. LSU looking for a drive. Here's Smart on McCullough, uh, pardon me, McClung. Offensive foul, third offensive foul against LSU here in this first half. Again, terrific job by McClung. He did it earlier in the game of forcing Smart to be a driver. Dri uh, Smart wants to shoot this step back three. McClung will not let him, runs on off the three-point line. That is scattering report to a T right there. Send him into the help, force a charge. Time now for the E-Trade Halftime Report. Let's send you the studio. Kevin Connors joined by Sean Farnham and Danny Manning. Back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. It's the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire. They moved inside here at the PMAC and they've seen some stars as we promised. We've got a one point game as we get ready to start the second half. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. We promised good scoring from individuals and both Texas Tech and LSU have delivered. He's been incredibly efficient, has Mac McClung for Texas Tech. We talked about his three level scoring ability in transition at the rim. If you play off him, expecting the drive, he showed you his range from deep to pull up. And I love this play in transition where they expect him to go at the rim and he just stops and pulls up over a bigger defender. Very efficient, five for seven from the field. And then Cam Thomas for LSU, thanking score every time he touches it. He exploited the mismatches, but even when Texas Tech had the matchup they wanted, he's gonna score every time. And then here he's just gonna hunt his shot, always looking at the rim. He's gonna get his attempts up, and he might not shoot the best percentages, but he sure does make the defense play on their heels. He's put up 10 of LSU's 28 shots. Turnover's the issue for Texas Tech. They turned it over on 32% of their possessions in the first half. Here's Javante Smart. LSU is sensational on those little runners. They are elite. 1.4 points per possession around the basket when they don't post up. Offensive board for Tech. Red Raiders close the half on a 6-0 run. Line in for the board is Days. Here's Watford. Good guy, one of the best assist men. McClung went for the steal. Awani Wilkinson does a lot of things. Scoring isn't one that he's relied on, and McClung steals it away from him. Jones goes, and he's going to the free throw line. <laughs> it's a thing of beauty. Uh, you just can't teach this. These are the types of instincts uh, that you're born with. And Mac McClung, you know, Look, he's going to get his hand in here and create the turnover. He's just so active, always around the ball. And then as the defense is backpedaling, he's not going to bail him out, just shows that ball, a little bit of a ball fake to make the defense react. Gets himself to the free throw line. He just, again, I think efficiency is the key word. He's just learned to be such a um, good scorer, high IQ player, and value the basketball in each possession for Texas Tech. Came in 10th in the Big 12 
in free throw percentage at 81 percent. The fouls on Milwaukee Wilkinson. Big Mac knocks them both down. He's got 16. 14 points a game in his two years at Georgetown. He's part of the Big East off freshman team. And led Patrick, Ewing, Patrick Ewing's squad in scoring last year. Thomas off the screen. Watford stepped back with a hand in his face. Santos Silva playing with two fouls brought that one down. McClung, no. It'll be LSU basketball. Early on the shot clock, but I, I like the shot. You had a little bit of a mismatch there, created space. That's a good look from McClung. Wilkinson gives it up. Here's Javante Smart. The three. Oh, you can't leave that guy open. He is the number one three-point shooter in the SEC. Right at 44%. Connor Edwards hasn't scored in this game. It goes off the standard. Yeah, I mean, this is just good, good ball movement. Wilkinson knows his role. He's rarely looking for his own, but he's looking for his teammates, and that's just a good decision. Monte Smart expecting it. Good shot prep. Nylon. Jamarius Burton and Chabuzo Agbo will check in the game for Texas Tech. Chris Beard going to his bench early this half. Yeah, well, he needs more production. You mentioned Edwards, but between Edwards and, and Shannon and other guys that you would expect, Santos Silva, I mean, these are your double digit type scorers. It can't just be all McClung to carry the offensive burden. Watford. Beard. Yelling instructions from the bench. He's talking to Micah Peavy saying you got to hold your ground. Chance for an and one for Jamarius Burton. His first bucket of the game. A good call there. The defender was inside the arc. We had a good, pretty good view of it considering we're what about 60 feet above the basket right now so <laughs> I, I, I trust my eyesight on that one that was a third on Watford resume for Beard awfully impressive AP coach of the year in 2019 bunch of stops including in the ABA he's been talking about the schedule they have coming up in a couple weeks with him just a couple days off among three games. He said, it reminds me of ABA playing the Carolina Cheetahs on Tuesday and the Jacksonville Giants on Wednesday. And he wasn't being facetious. <laughs> I mean, those are some real team names there. They got to figure out a way to get a stop because they don't, I, I don't know if the, the double team hadn't really worked on Watford. One on one hadn't worked. Smart got a half step. Empty possession for LSU. Long two. Offensive board and then a block by Wilkinson. Open three. Got it! And Texas Tech has tied this game. Outstanding play by Santo Silva. Staying after it and realizing rim protectors all around. Shooters must be open. Kicks it out. Six nothing Texas Tech run. Thomas from deep. And it's lost out of bounds by McCullough. It's out of 40 things with this last shot. We said it earlier in the broadcast, the best time to get an open three is off an offensive rebound when the whole defense is collapsed. Nobody's paying attention to shooters. Santos Silva recognizes it, picks it out. See if that can't get Edwards into a rhythm. This is a key player for this Texas Tech team. They rely on him to get them some points on the offensive side. One of four averaging double figures. Watford inside. Offensive board put back by Days. Darius Days is shooting 71% for two on the season. Top 25 in the country in that regard. Here's McClung. 
Santo Silva gives it up. All day for Shannon. Big three. TJ Shannon. Defensive breakdown there. You got to know where the shooters are. And Shannon in the highest percentage shot on the court spot on the court, the corner three. Smart. Here's Thomas. No answer. It's into McClung's hands. Nice slip. And another bucket inside. Santo Silva has half dozen. Will Wade need to use a timeout? Texas Tech has surged ahead. They're more efficient now, up by three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. And a part by the Chicken Slinger for just $2.49 only at Sonic. Tom Hart, Dane Bradshaw. It's a simple equation for Texas Tech, Dane, when they take care of the basketball. They've been a good offensive team tonight. Absolutely no turnovers here in this second half. It's been a little sloppy at times with the hectic up and down style of play, but uh, I think they've made it more their style in keeping the points in the paint, forcing tough shots and one-on-one -on -one plays for LSU. Ball screen for Smart. Here's Thomas. Guarded by Edwards. Thomas into the paint. Rebound day is rejected, but a foul. And that'll be the second, uh, pardon me, that'll be the third on Kevin McCullough. A bailout for an LSU team that's made just one out of its last seven. Tenth ranked Texas Tech trying to survive on the road, leading by three in the second half. NBA Saturday primetime on ABC and the ESPN app tonight. Lakers, Celtics. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Always seemingly close. The longtime rivals have played three games decided by two points or less over the last three seasons. Out of a seven game road trip for the Lakers. SEC Big 12 challenge. One win apiece in the early time slot. You know, Tom, this thing's become so much more competitive. Uh, when it first started, it was quality win opportunities for the SEC and bad loss opportunities for the Big 12. But over the past four years, it's been neck and neck. And I think the key word everyone's been using in their press conference this week has been opportunity uh, to improve their resume for the NCAA tournament in what's going to be a really wacky, wild year as it relates to the resume. Missed opportunity for Kentucky tonight. Their game at Rupp against Texas has been canceled. Meanwhile, Kansas will go to Rocky Top to take on Tennessee later this evening. Tech by two. Here's Shannon. Gives it up. And the rebound pulled down by Darius Days. Averages eight boards a game. Smart lost it on his way up the floor. Lucky to regain. Trigger, Eric Gaines will run the offense for LSU. They move smart off the ball now. Shot clock at seven. Gaines puts up an air ball. O'Neal there to bail him out. Got a hurry. Corner three and another air ball. Well, they never got what they wanted at all in that possession. Shannon almost walked with it. Loses it, fights for it, gets it back, fades and has it rejected. It'll be Texas Tech basketball. <laughs> Two competitors battling it out there. McClung just rips this thing away. And I don't think LSU was too happy about him taking that away from them. And Cam Thomas, yeah, I applaud LSU's effort. They've been beat up on the 
offensive glass by other teams recently, but a lot better job in this game, bringing the fight against a tough Texas Tech team, so physical. I mean, Texas Tech, these guys get 35% of their misses. That's 30th in the country, so if you can hold them in check on the offensive rebound opportunities, you give yourself a good chance to win. Tech plus seven on the glass. Sato Silva kicks it out. McClung wide open. Is just one for five for three. Days for the lead. Got it! Days Days the second shot. He's the clue to this LSU Tiger team. When he plays well, they win. When he doesn't, they don't. Starting to come alive here in the second half. Got a foul away from the ball. It's going to be a Josh LeBlanc. This is a good transfer second. Excuse me. This is just a good trailer three by Darius Days. I mean, he comes down and a simple handoff was shot ready. There it is. I mean, he plays with a lot of emotion. And their four losses on the year, he's averaging just under five points per game. And in their wins, double digit guy. 11 career double doubles for Days. 16 footer off the mark. And Days able to grab that rebound. He's near a double double this one. That's his ninth board. Javante Smart down the lane. Oh, Sidestep. Javante Smart so crafty in the lane. A little hezzy. He hezzied on the tendies pregame. <laughs> Mid range good. Terrence Shannon. TJ's now got seven after an 0 for 3 in the first half. Coach Beard talks about his team being stone faced. Whatever they throw at you, just stay composed. And that's it right there. Nice answer by Shannon. Smart. Offensive foul, that's his second offensive foul. But LSU holding on to a one-point lead. A tough charge there, but here's Javante Smart in transition. Moves those shoulders, tacks the rim high and smooth off the glass for one and white. Well, Mac McClung knows all about late game situations. Here he is against Texas, providing the game winner. And a thrilling night and a two-point win for Texas Tech. And then a uh, big Monday had another opportunity. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. Missed it by that much. We asked him about his theory in late-game situations. And the guy who's just a junior in college now referenced game six of the 97 NBA championship, Jordan Kerr. Yeah, the chemistry, look. Look for your shot, but also keep an eye on your teammates. He's going in there to make a play, not always for himself. But uh, you got to have guts to take those shots and in those moments. And this kid's got some big time guts, win or lose. Here's Mac McClung coming off of a 30 point performance. He's got 16 in this one. And a foul up top. We'll go on Josh LeBlanc. That's his third. Christian Watford has been on the bench with three. He's back on the floor now. Yeah, they need to get him going offensively, does LSU. He's been a good facilitator, but try to get those mismatches down low. Take advantage of some of Texas Tech switching. Mm. Like even right now, Edwards 11 is guarding Watford. Watford has the advantage. I'd look to post him up at the elbow or the block. Offensive foul. That's the fourth that goes against LSU in this game. Eric Gaines commits at that time, and TJ Shannon there to pick it up. That's on the scouting report. LSU likes to have floaters and drivers. But more critical than the offensive foul would be if Days is out for LSU. How did he get hurt on that? He's opposite side of the LSU bench. Watch for four and white to come into your screen. Oh, he just turned his left ankle as he came down right in front of Shannon, tried to adjust. I mentioned before that he was really the glue to this LSU team. Now they can be competitive without him, mm. but they typically can't win without him. He caught the heel of Shannon, and then that slight roll is enough. And athletic trainer Sean Eddy will help him off the court. That's a bad sign for LSU. 
That's a one. shame to see. Uh, all the more reason to get Watford going down low because uh, Day's a big physical presence for him in the paint. Texas Tech throws it away. That's their first turnover this half. Days can't put any weight, seemingly, or hardly any weight, on that left leg, on the left ankle. Days leaves the game with 11 points and nine boards. They're going to slowly take him all the way back into the LSU locker room. Wide open corner three, Eric Gaines. Run! He's run! Only three of 16, three on the season. Beard tells his guys to run, wants him to push it. Here's Shannon. Got it to go, and Texas Tech takes a one point lead. I don't know if there's another player on the court that can make that athletic of a play, finish through contact, the hang time, and still be above the rim. This kid's a special athlete. Watford. This time over Shannon. Rebounded by McCullough. Run! Stolen away by Smart. Reverse. Oh, the old adage, be quick, don't be in a hurry. Coach Beard screaming for them to run. T.J. Shannon, another bucket. He's got 10 this half, giving him 12 in the game, and it's Texas Tech by two. It's the self-inflected wounds for Texas Tech. If they can take care of the basketball, uh, they got control of this game. Watford drawing attention out to Thomas. Foul on the three for the second time in this game. Here's TJ Shannon. He's just so good, so athletic. This is why you see his name on NBA draft boards. Just knifes through that defense, absorbs the contact, keeps the body control, and then he's been working so hard in the offseason on this three-point shot to where he is a reliable three-point shooter. A gym rat that has added that to his game. Good second half. Three free throws coming for Cam Thomas. He's top 20 in the country in fouls drawn per 40 minutes. He draws seven of them, according to Ken Palm. And that's a big foul. I mean, you don't want to foul a guy like this from the three-point line as efficient as he is from the stripe. And he's really started to cool off in this game. Just 4 or 15 from the field. And if you're Texas Tech, you can live with that. Uh, but you can't allow him to get himself going at the strike. Coming off of a 28-point performance in LSU's win against Texas A&M, in which they closed that game on an 18-0 run. Knocks them all down. LSU's got a one-point lead. We got. Two shots coming the other way on the free throw. Looks like it may be a technical foul here. I don't know if that's Coach Wade or not. We're not as close to the action as we normally are. It'll be Shannon at the free throw line. 11th of the Big 12 with free throw percentage with an 80. The foul was on Christian, uh, pardon me, Trenton Watford. Well, not only is that a poor play from giving the opponent two free throws in the ball, but that gets you your fourth personal foul if you're Trenton Watford. And we asked Coach Beard about this last night. We said, look, this is an LSU team that likes to chirp a li little bit, likes to trash talk. He said, yes, we've addressed that. We, talk, we call that the game within the game for each opponent. And that's one of the things they addressed was keeping that stone face mentality. Don't take the bait. Paid off there. Wow. What a move by T.J. Shannon. He's blowing up in the second half with 14 points. Tech leads by three. We called for somebody else to help McClung with the scoring load in the second half. And boy, has T.J. Shannon stepped up. Tells you really needs Camp Thomas. And it's foul again, and it's a three-point chance. Second and Edwards. <laughs> That's too good, man. It's unbelievable. He's just so comfortable at any spot on the court. They force him right, and he's just going to do one dribble pull up and one. And, you know, you've you got to contest the shot and try to make it difficult, but he's so good at drawing that foul the closer you get. Scorers just know how to get the ball in the bucket, whether it's at the stripe from two or from three, and he does it all. 
He's now eight of nine from the free throw line. He's got 20. Devontae Smart has 21. That's 41 of LSU's 56 from these two guys. Shannon, big second half, setting up O'Neill for three. And it's knocked out of bounds by LSU off of LeBlanc. The LSU bench is really going to have to step up because when you talk about LSU, it's not just the big three in Watford, Thomas, and, and uh, Smart, but it's also Darius Days. And they're without two of those four right now with Days in the locker room and Watford on the bench. Bench is being outscored 21-0 by Texas Tech. Now we go to LSU off the miss by Burton. score Thomas get tied up spin still gonna heave Wilkinson saves it but saves it to Texas Tech numbers for the Red Raiders Burton shares it and converted by McCuller well that bad shot was just as bad as a turnover an air ball Cam Thomas has to learn to give it up and get it back so that he can create a better scoring opportunity for himself and his team Agbo and Smart. Javante Smart. To the Better job being under control. He's been called for two charges that time. Much more discipline. And this LSU team that just loves the one-on-one -on -one break you down, the matchups, where you are on the court. And this time Smart avoids any charge. Easy two at the basket. We've got to fight Baton Rouge. SEC and Big 12 tied at one win apiece. And a couple teams that, especially on the Texas Tech side, get used to close games. A nice slice through and a finish by Kyler Edwards. Meanwhile, on the LSU side, Dane, it's been all Javante Smart, Cameron Thomas, with Darius Days out, at least for now, with an ankle injury. Looks like it will have to continue to be that way. That's not such a bad thing for LSU. And there's that step back. Ooh, that's his favorite spot on the court, or move on the court, to get the open three. A rare miss for Smart. Well, they got McClung open in the corner if they can get it to him. They brought Quick it down. reversal. McClung still waiting for it. There it is. Shot back at seven. A blow by after great defense, but no finish. And a block finds the rebound. Will H says, go, go, go. Here's Thomas, past McClung, all the way to the rim. And will go back to the free throw line. As long as your name is Smart or Thomas, go, go, go. <laughs> Everybody else, hold up, hold up. Because th this is who's going to carry the LSU team. Uh, again, it, it's really odd. You rarely see this. But this is an LSU team that's 300th in the The only assists are about 44% of their mates. However, they're the sixth most efficient team in the country, which goes to show you that what they do works. It's the space, it's the matchups, and it's the one-on-one -on -one plays that they have from their superstars. Kevin McCuller picked up his fourth. And so Chris Beard will get him out of the game and go to his bench. The Texas Tech bench has been magnificent. Outscoring LSU tonight, 21 to nothing. Another one coming for Thomas. The nation's leading freshman scorer has 22. His back will make Javante Smart has 23. Well, and I think a big part of this game, uh, as we talk about the game within the game, Texas Tech typically outscores their opponent by five points at the free throw line. Tonight, today it's 12 and 12. Good job by LSU getting themselves to the strike. And part of that is the frequency with which the Red Raiders get to the line. Here's McClung to the free throw line. Nice spin move. McClung finds a loose ball, finds a teammate, and then a foul on the block, and that's his fourth. That's a nice find by McClung in traffic. And that's the
the ball gets reversed to him and he knifes down the lane. Excuse me, not reverse, picks up the loose ball. Finds McCuller. And, I mean, these teams are playing hard. They're not playing perfect, but I think the fight and effort is certainly there. Marcus Santos Silva at the free throw line, senior from Taunton, Mass, by way of VCU. He's got two free throws. Graduated from VCU with 828 points. His monster game came in the A-10 tournament. He had 26 points and 22 boards against Rhode Island. It was the first ever 2020 game in A-10 tournament history. This for the lead. With under six to go. Missed them both. Rebounded by Wilkinson. Thomas guarded by Shannon, went right by him. Offensive foul. Great help defense by Santos Silva. What is that, the fifth time we've seen the Red Raiders force the LSU perimeter players into the help, into the traffic, run them off that three-point line? And the Tigers are just going to have to watch it more carefully as they love the floater. But you're going to have to come to a jump stop or avoid that charge. They're waiting on you. Contested three from Edwards. Monroe, Keller, Monroe. Javante Smart heaves. Top of Shannon. 26 for Javante Smart, first team preseason All SEC player, and he's looking like it late. 5 10 remaining in Red Stick. It's LSU by three. No timeout after all. Texas Tech puts up the three that's off the mark, and LSU has a chance to add to a three point advantage. Beard yelling stance at his guys. Smart. Tell him watch the step back. Smart, baby. My goodness. He was playing with some confidence. 2,000 in the P-Mac. Sounds like 10,000. Chris Beard frustrated. The Texas Tech team. Javante Smart, back-to-back -back threes, and ain't nothing LSU run. Yeah, this is just better offense. Javante Smart, his confidence is through the roof. The step-back crossover, Smart feeling it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. And in part by Burger King, $1 your way, only at Burger King. It's been Javante Smart's way here late. Back-to-back -back threes. He's got 29 points in this one. He's four from 1,000 in his career. The junior from right here in Baton Rouge leading the way for LSU. And if you're Texas Tech, I think you got to realize, hey, just stay calm, stay composed. That's how we win this game. LSU's an emotional team. They're going to make some of those shots. The crowd's going to get into it. But right now, this is an opportunity for both ball clubs. LSU really needing that quality win. Texas Tech needing to get over the hump so that they can win more of these close games. It's a three-minute scoring job for the Red Raiders. Here's Edwards in the paint. Offensive board. It still won't go. Loose ball finds McClung. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Four minutes left in regulation. McCullough. Playing with four fouls. Here's Shannon. Hangs off balance and draws the foul on Milani Wilkinson. Give a good team multiple opportunities. You're going to pay the price. And that time, Texas Tech with three shots at the basket in one possession found the right man, TJ Shannon, who's 14 points in this second half been the best player on the court for Texas Tech. He's had a monster second half. Matt McClung has disappeared this half. McClung only 
Two points since the break. I do think they complement each other, though. I mean, as, as the focus comes on McClung, things open up for Shannon. McClung 14 in the first half, two in the second. Shannon, two in the first half, 14 in the second. One or two from the line. Javante Smart has tied his career high with 29 in this one. Almost threw it away. Watford, blocking foul. Second on T.J. Shannon. LSU wants to get something coming towards the basket on this baseline out of bounds. Here comes Watford. Wow, threw it up blind. Run, run. Empty possession for LSU. Red Raiders wanting to push. Shannon, did he get tipped? It did, and it will stay with Texas Tech with 3.22 to go down five. Well, T.J. Shannon with a veteran type play there on defense. He just pulled the chair, the old school pull the chair type defense. Caused Watford to get off balance. Shannon was wide open and said it's Edwards. By, guarded by Smart, now McClung. Got the freshman Wilkinson on. McClung goes down. Here's Edwards from the corner. Big time three, Connor Edwards. All eight of his have come since the break, and Texas Tech is now down two. Well, they never stop fighting. Out of the timeout, they've gone on a quick 4-0 run. They don't flinch. Clutch shot by Edwards. Here's Kent Thomas. Walked with it. The close out defense by McClung caused Thomas to shuffle his feet to get set. You nailed it. I think McClung's defensive closeouts have been terrific in this game. And it's all scouting report of, hey, run them off the free throw line. Don't let them pull up jumper. Force him into the help. And McClung has done a terrific job no matter who he's been on in this game. Caller, tough angle. Five Tigers there on the glass, brought down by LeBlanc. Hey. Hey. Thomas gets it back after giving it to Smart. Shot clock at seven. Thomas. Gathers, fires, drains it. Yeah. 25 for Ken Thomas. The club trying to get it going. Left it short. It's blocked by the block. Red Raiders get it back. Santos Silva. Watford finds it. Meanwhile, Smart went down hard. They taken a shot to the mouth. Turned over, and the Red Raiders have to save it on the baseline. They give it back, and a mid-court foul. That's <laughs> pinball in the last 90 seconds. Nobody is questioning the effort on either side of the court for both of these teams. And if you're Texas Tech, it's like, what do you do? You guard Cam Thomas as best as you can, and that step back three going to his left. I mean, it, you can't guard this any better. They're trying to force him to the right, but then you get the switch on TJ Shannon. You got the length, you got the contest. Just the high arc on that shot. He's already been fouled shooting a three once. By the way, that last personal foul is on TJ Shannon, and that's his third. Shoot by five. Looking for a dagger here with 1.15 to go. Smart down the lane. 
at the PMAC. Hi, right, Kevin. It's a game of stars in this one. McClung showing up here late in the half. Shannon's been fantastic, but on the LSU side, Javante Smart with a career game. Yeah, neither team was really able to get any separation in this game, but it was Javante Smart, his back-to-back -back threes late in the second half that started to give LSU a little bit of a cushion. And he's been doing it all game, though. Again, the SEC's best three-point shooter, 34% from deep. And he does it with such a degree of difficulty. It can be step back. It can be off the catch from three. The dribble crossover plays with such emotion and fire. But they're going to need him to carry them as well down the stretch as LSU looking for their best win of this season. Smart gets it, gives it up to Watford. Oh. Almost gave the ball back. Oh. And a quick foul with 48.8. It's Edwards third. LSU came into this game 77% from the free throw line. Yeah, but LeBlanc only came in one for three on the year. So you talk about a guy that's rarely been to the stripe in a clutch moment. Good decision by Texas Tech playing the odds. LSU in the bonus. Josh LeBlanc. Off the mark. Chris Beard said downhill. He wants you to push it. 45 seconds left. Two possession game. Not to do it for McClung. Here's Shannon. Splits the defense. Gives it up. Agbo off with the three. McClung finds it. He'll fire. Big time three back McClung. <laughs> we talked about this kid's guts. He is an absolute warrior on the court. He just never stops moving. The activity, he sees where the ball is going. He understands the sense of urgency. And now twice in the last minute, finds a way to get back-to-back -back threes for Texas Tech. Remember, he had the game winner against Texas. Did not knock down the game winner against West Virginia. Pressure by Texas Tech. LSU wasn't ready. And the Tigers will have to use the timeout. It's their last. Texas Tech still has one remaining. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Beard and his team. This run, many runs, started a possession ago when they started doing the double team. And they wanted LSU to force, pass the ball around, and then intentionally foul LSU's least experienced free throw shooter on the court. Next thing you know, you've got a four-point swing in a one-possession game. Garth Brooks plays in the background. That was playing in the shoot-around yesterday for Texas Tech. Chris Beard said, hey, it's nothing special. Garth is on the playlist every shoot-around. <laughs> John Denver's on the playlist every shoot-around. Last two games just happen to be in West Virginia and here in Baton Rouge. All right, so if you're Texas Tech, what are you doing defensively on this possession? There's a 1.4 difference between the shot clock and game clock. Well, I think you continue to throw some traps, make LSU throw over the top, see if you can't create a turnover. But that's only good for about 10 or 15 seconds. Then you've got to foul and extend this game. Uh, but LSU showing, look, they can be a little bit careless with the ball. So try to get it out of the better decision makers' hands. See if you can't force the role players. They got Wilkinson on the floor. 72% on the season, but hasn't shot a free throw tonight. And Watford is 0 for 2 from the free throw line. The one you don't want to foul is Thomas, who's been money. LSU out of timeouts. Watford will trigger the inbounds. He's got TJ Shannon in front of him. Shannon now denying. Stolen by McClung. Shannon got it. It's Tech by one. Watford panicking. No timeouts for LSU. 25 seconds to go. Freshman Camp Thomas with 25 will bring it up. With 19, early shot. Watford with a push off. It'll be Texas Tech at the free throw line leading by one. 
He's all over the place. Mac McClung, whether he's scoring, defending, anticipating, comes up with the biggest deflection of the year for Texas Tech. And sure enough, he puts it right in the hands of their best scorer, T.J. Shannon, who has been sensational in this second half. Meanwhile, how costly was the technical on Trent and Watford earlier this half? That got him an extra personal. He is now fouled out, fouled out with 16.9 remaining. Big free throws coming for T.J. Shannon, sophomore from Chicago. Five of six from the line. Mm. Hit every part. He's got 18. McClung steal and two threes late have set the stage for a Texas Tech road win. If you're LSU, you want Smart or Thomas to have it coming back. I think you got to go with Thomas. Thomas gets his shot off anywhere on the court. Javante Smart, 15. Thomas in the far corner. Smart at midcourt. Didn't go in late. Now at nine, he's got two in front of him. O'Neal gives it up. Here's Cam Thomas for three in the tie. It's off the mark. And Texas Tech comes to Baton Rouge, and the Red Raiders will survive. There is time left on the clock, but not much. Clock kept rolling, so they'll revisit and see how much they'll put back on. But what a finish by Big Mac, the yeah. Georgetown transfer. And yes, Texas Tech has the comeback, but LSU, two really good looks, back-to-back -back possession. You like Cam Thomas going right with the pull-up. Misses that. That one gets the solid look from three, just does not fall. But this all started 66-60. LSU took the lead. The crowd was in it. The emotions were high, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders kept that stone-faced identity that Coach Beard preaches to his team, and they were incredibly tough in those final three and a half minutes. LSU handed it to AM with a run late to win their last game. Now it's Texas Tech returning the favor. The Red Raiders on a 10-0 run in the last minute of play. How incredible is Mac McClung? Comes down the quick three to force the timeout. They get set up in their defense. Then he hauls down the offensive rebound, another three, and then the deflection that leads to game-winning basket, T.J. Shannon. Double bonus, T.J. Shannon two to make it a two-possession game. He only needs one. Fantastic second half for T.J. Shannon, 18 since the break. McClung came alive late. What did we ask about late game situations? Be unselfish. Jordan DeCur, find my guy. That's what he did after finding the loose ball. 76-71, Texas Tech over LSU. The final run is 12-0 over the last 59 seconds. The SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire continues. Let's get you set for Arkansas and Oklahoma State. Alongside Chris Patola, here's Rich Hollenberg.